we're going to address three unconventional oil extraction methods. And while discussing them, keep in mind the costs that are not just economic, but also costly in terms of environmental damage, human safety compromises, and political tensions. Fracking, or hydraulic fracturing, is when we force a fluid into a well that releases natural gas and oil bound up in usually clay or shale where it has low mobility. Sometimes we mix solvents in and sometimes sand is mixed in as well because the sand will deposit itself in the fissures allowing long-term diffusion, keeping them open and allowing long-term diffusion of gas and oil out. This technology has potentially doubled the accessible natural gas in the United States and is a great boon to industry. There are significant environmental ramifications. The fluid forced down into the well can also incorporate itself in aquifers that we rely on for well water. The fluid that comes out can contaminate surface water. This contamination is further complicated by the fact that we don't know all the chemicals in the water and at present the companies don't have to say, claiming trade secrets for their industry, that they don't have to disclose this information. When fluid gets caught, this high pressure fluid can also flow into pre-existing faults and lubricating them, resulting in increased earthquake, which has been well documented. Additionally, gas comes out that pollutes the air. As a result, there's a significant amount of pushback against these technologies that we've been reading about for the past several years. Recently, the EPA has passed a law saying that these companies, fracking companies, can no longer vent the gas that comes from fracking wells into the atmosphere because of concern over air pollution to the local community. Not only is it poisonous, but there's also a significant amount of methane in the gas. That's a significant global warming gas. The EPA also calculates that by collecting this methane, the companies will make a considerable am amount of money. The response of the industry has been an outcry that this is very detrimental. And so the EPA has pushed back the date of compliance to about two and a half years and said that during that period of time, they will need to flare the gases, meaning they burn them into the air rather than allowing them to go into the air unburnt. In Alberta, a significant amount of oil, potentially as much oil that is beneath Saudi Arabia, is locked up underground with sand. The present technique being used is to strip away the lithosphere above the, the tar sands. This oil is very heavy, it's bitumen, tar, and therefore must be heated greatly in order to release it from the sands. And this can be done in a number of ways. They can actually heat the tar sands in the ground, making it mobile, and then pumping it out hot. However, the present conventional method is to strip away the lithosphere over the tar sands, mine the tar sands, and then bake the oil out of it, and then discard the sand and a large amount of water that is used to process the tar sands. So here you see what looks like a lake, but it's actually a rather large cesspool that's contaminated with oil from the tar sands processing. This processing requires a significant amount of energy that has its own emissions as well. This yellow plateau results from the extraction of sulfur from the tar sands because the tar sands are very rich in sulfur. The extraction of sulfur is called sweetening. When you talk about the light, light sweet crude oil, it means there's very little sulfur in it. The sulfur must be removed so that we don't have a significant amount of sulfur dioxide or sulfur trioxide in our car exhaust. These contaminants result in sulfuric acid. The, the objections of the environmental community have caused tensions between the United States and Canada as well. And more recently, they found tar sand deposits in the United States under, note their words, lush green hills of Utah. But what's pushing this to happen is the high price of oil. This could just be the beginning. And so you have the option to take a stand with uh, 350.org. Newer drilling technologies allow us to drill very deep and also have horizontal excursions underground. And we can see as a function of the year, we have larger and larger excursions up to 20,000 feet, which is about four miles. 
furthermore, underneath, we can explore, take, take data, and do tests in order to find oil deposits. So for example, recently Chevron dug a well in the Gulf of Mexico. Chevron dug down about 7,000 feet and then another 15,000 feet horizontal and found a reserve that potentially increases United States reserves by 50 percent. This deep water drilling requires a significant amount of technology at a great cost, large infrastructure, and significant risk. It is a two-year anniversary that the Deepwater Horizon exploded with significant environmental repercussions. So who is the oil? Canada is potentially as large as Saudi Arabia if we include the tar sands. Amount of oil consumed so far, we can see who's fat, dumb, and happy there. Petroleum imports, petroleum exports. So how much does it cost to produce oil? What we have here is the amount of oil in the crust in billions of barrels of oil. This black region represents the approximately one trillion barrels consumed so far. And here we have about another trillion barrels accessible. The decreasing color indicates less and less certainty that this oil exists. On the y-axis, we have the cost in dollars per barrel of pumping this oil out of the ground. So we can see conventional oil costs between five and ten dollars a barrel to pump out of the ground. And we have approximately one trillion barrels more. Then we have enhanced oil recovery. We can produce petroleum from natural gas and we can produce petroleum from coal and oil shale as well. This publication by Alex Farrell in 2006 was before the advent of fracking and so quite likely enhanced oil recovery and gas to liquid sin fuels could be considerably greater right now. What we see with these increased technologies there's an increased cost to extract and produce the fuel. But what do we compare this cost to? This $40 per barrel for coal to liquid, coal to liquid synthetic fuels. Is producing oil by this method economically viable? Well, we compare it to the present price of crude, which is around $100 a barrel, so we can see all of these technologies are financially viable. And thus, the total reserves of oil in the crust are significant, much more than we've used so far, enough to last us many years if we choose to exploit them. Economic cost is not the only cost. We can look at the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So we can look at the carbon dioxide emissions in grams of carbon per megajoule that you get from burning a fuel. And so you get about 20, 20 grams of carbon is from the combustion itself. Anything over that is what we call upstream emissions, the amount of carbon dioxide emitted in bringing that petroleum to the consumer. And so we can see it's a small amount for, for conventionally produced oil. However, enhanced oil recovery, which can include pumping steam into a well to loosen up the oil, or fracking. If we are to synthesize oil from coal, we can see that the upstream emissions of bringing you that oil are as much or more than the fuel emissions that you get from burning it. This is actually a technology that's being tried out on a rather large scale in China. So what we can see, there's a significant amount of oil remaining that's accessible. And when this publication came out, the primary concern about petroleum was the carbon dioxide emissions. However, with the advent of fracking, there's a lot of concern about what we're doing to the land itself and other pollutants besides carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. In understanding more about peak oil, we should be able to check if these really are political realities. Drilling for oil has a huge profit margin because it costs on the order of $10 a barrel to pull it out of the ground and the market price is about $100 a barrel. Oil is a global market. We trade between countries and the price is set by global supply and demand. The amount of oil produced by the USA is very small compared to that of the rest of the world. And as a consequence, and we should be able to explain why, taxing oil companies for extraction will not decrease jobs, the amount of oil, or the cost of gasoline, which is what the oil companies claim. 
it will simply reduce their profits a small amount. Because there's a huge profit margin in drilling for oil, increasing domestic oil will not appreciably reduce the cost of gasoline. Because oil is a global market, if we drill domestically, we'll only increase the world supply by a tiny amount, which will have very little effect on the cost, on the price of gasoline. However, it will improve our trade deficit. It will improve our economy. Because it's a global market, and you can't tell where your oil comes from, and oil moves around, we cannot exert force on a country by refusing to buy their oil, because it'll find its way somewhere else into that global market. So hopefully what we understand is we don't really run out of oil. It's not like there's a big barrel of oil and we're going to suck it dry and in 15 years, boom, we're going to be out. There's oil accessible with increasing, increasing difficulty. We can actually look, if we look at our energy stocks and flows, how much we have locked up in the earth. At our present oil consumption rate, please calculate how long this much oil would last us. And so it's not an issue of running out. But what we will do in order to get more oil as it becomes more and more difficult to extract, and if we want to bear these consequences, and the larger the oil shortage, the higher the price of oil, the greater these, the greater these consequences will be. And so we would like to minimize this shortage. Okay, if we model, if we simply model the United States production, if, if we say at year zero we have peak production and it drops off and we recognize that our demand continues to grow, we'll have this shortage here. And this will cause a significant economic hardship. However, if we mitigate in that we reduce our demand, the shortage will be less. This is where we're mitigating at peak. So at peak, we realize it's more and more difficult to extract oil, and so we reduce our demand. However, if we could, redu if we could mitigate before we peak, we would have more oil in the earth, and we would have a lower demand, so the shortage would be delayed considerably, and it would be much less detrimental. And if we start even further to mitigate, then we, we can delay peaking and shortages even further. So the more we prepare for this, it will soften the repercussions as the oil becomes more and more difficult to extract.